Right. Hey, welcome everybody to our BSPU call. Um, today I have uh, a lot of examples to share with you and some things that I think are going to be really, really important, um, especially if you're trying to figure out ways to use your book to grow your business and consider, you know, what the whole uh, kind of methodology is. We're going to talk a little bit about, well, we're going to talk a lot about your offer uh, and also how your book is connected to your offer, whatever your offer is. If you're a coach, consultant, uh, a company like Best Seller Publishing, we're a done-for-you service, right? We help ghostwrite, publish, book launches, media PR, et cetera. So we're going to spend a good amount of time talking about your offer and then talking about the role that your book plays in your offer and with everything that you do. So I'm going to share my screen and... Um, we're going to dive into the whiteboard first and talk about offer. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of examples and hopefully this will bring it to life. If you have questions along the way, then uh, obviously please make sure that you ask those questions and I will do my best to answer them. I'm going to move my camera so that I can write on my whiteboard. My whiteboard is a uh, one of these Microsoft surfaces, which is cool. And, uh, you know, I love to use it. So I've got to move it down so that I can write on it. Okay, awesome. All right, so uh, let's call this, uh, let's call this offer magic. Uh, when I'm talking about your offer, I'm talking about what it is that you're telling your marketplace so that they have an interest in working with you, whatever that means, uh, how you're communicating with your marketplace. I'm not talking about all the specific features of what you do. An example would be, I'm not talking about the fact that bestseller publishing can format your book or edit your book or, you know, do the, the, the tech parts uh, with Amazon. It's, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about how you communicate your offer to the marketplace so that people are interested in doing business with you. Uh, there's lots of different ways to look at this. And, and if you uh, do a Google search on, you know, how to create a compelling offer or, or how, to, how to make a great offer, you'll see a lot of different examples and ideas. I want to talk about three things that you need to have a super compelling, interesting, powerful offer that people are going to be interested in and want to take advantage of in your market, whatever your market is. And if you do good and, and you communicate specifically, clearly, powerfully in these three areas, then you're going to have a great offer. And if you do not, then you're not going to have a great offer. No matter how good you are at your job, you're not going to be able to sell it because people aren't going to be coming to you for it. Okay. So like I said, there, there may be seven, eight, 10, I'm going to talk to you about three things. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. And I'm going to give you some examples about that. Okay. So three things that we want to do. And what we want is we want to hit this sweet spot here of all three of these things. Okay. So number one, um, for a compelling offer, you need to communicate, uh, and I'm going to use some initials, but I'll also write this down, a serious problem or desire that your ideal client has, okay? Number one, so you need to communicate a serious problem or desire that your ideal client has. Now, I'm going to share some examples, and you're going to see what I mean in these examples, but you can think about this yourself with anything that you're interested in buying. Sometimes it is described as your uh, offer needs to solve a bleeding neck problem for your ideal client. While that may be true, sometimes it's not a bleeding neck in the sense of it being incredibly painful. Sometimes it is a incredible desire that they have, right? I don't know that anybody is, is in pain uh, when it comes to completing their book. Um, although at the moment of writing, maybe you are in pain. 
but it's often not a bleeding neck problem, but it is a serious, serious desire that people have, right? And that's why you guys are my clients and why we're having this discussion. So that's number one. You need to communicate. You need to know, number one, obviously, most obviously, you need to know what the serious problem or desire is for your ideal client. And you need to communicate that to your ideal client in the marketplace. Number two, you need either a USP or a UM, a USP or a UM. Well, you've heard of USP. Uh, USP is a unique selling proposition. You've probably heard of that in the past. Let me tell you what the problem is with USPs. There are almost no USPs. <laughs> um, what are great examples of USPs these days? Uh, well, let's go back. Let's, what are great examples of USPs that are given? Um, FedEx is one that is given. What was FedEx's big, unique selling proposition? Well, um, they were the first ones to be able to get your package or your envelope or your mail someplace overnight. Well, guess what? They don't have a unique selling proposition anymore because there's a dozen places where you can get your package from one place to another overnight. However, they had great first mover advantage and they exploded because they had a truly unique selling proposition. Nobody else could get your package from here to there overnight, except for FedEx. Remember Domino's. Domino's is often cited as having a unique selling proposition. What was Domino's? And Domino's is actually a combination of number, number two and number three, which I'll get to in a second. And Domino's was, they said, hey, we will deliver your pizza. It will be fresh and hot. They never said it would be delicious, but they said it would be fresh and hot 30 minutes, in 30 minutes, at your door, or it was free. Now, of course, they did that for a limited time because, you know, people were getting into accidents and were, were absolutely going insane, but that put Domino's on the map. It was a truly unique offer, a truly unique selling proposition, right? Now, there aren't many of you that have that. I'm going to show you one uh, in, in one of my examples in something new that we're doing uh, that I'm doing with a partner that is, because it is a truly unique offer, it is exploding. However, if you don't have a unique selling proposition, and bestseller publishing, by the way, we do not have a USP. You know, uh, there are other companies that can do a book for you. There are other companies that can publish a book for you. There are other companies that can market your book or get you on TV or media, right? Uh, that is is not a unique selling proposition that we can do that well we can do it better okay maybe maybe not right that's what a that's what a you know a, a prospect is going to think that does not make it unique however what we do have is the um part that is a unique mechanism a unique mechanism now what is a unique mechanism by the way i'll write this down that's a usp or a um a unique mechanism is a unique way to deliver the results to your ideal client. So if you do not, and I'm going to say more than likely, you do not have a USP. In other words, you're not doing something completely, completely unique in your marketplace. Then what you do need to have is you need to have some type of unique way that you are delivering that. What is our unique way? Well, when it comes to ghostwriting, we do something called enhanced ghostwriting. We learned, I learned early on, my very, very first attempt at ghostwriting myself. If you don't know the story, I'll give you the 30-second overview of it. Uh, before I ever thought about getting into publishing, I wrote a book for my financial services company back in 2008 and 2009. I worked with a ghostwriter. It was a terrible experience, not because the ghostwriter was a bad person, not because the ghostwriter, you know, didn't understand syntax or because the ghostwriter didn't have a great grasp of the English language. No, the problem was when the ghostwriter did this uh, kind of traditional ghostwriting with me, where they interviewed me to get answers to questions. What I found was what they gave me back, which was like a 186 page book, it was not in my voice. It sounded like anybody could have written it and it wasn't unique to me. So we developed our own unique mechanism called enhanced ghostwriting. 
which follows principles of a TED talk. I've shared this many, many times. I've never heard anybody else talk about a methodology like this in creating content. And we created this because we knew that traditional ghostwriting did not really produce great content. So we have a unique mechanism of delivering it. Same with our launches. Our launch is a unique mechanism of delivering the results, okay? So you need a, if you don't have a USP, you need a UM, a unique mechanism, okay? And number three, and lastly, ideally, these two are the most important, one and two, but ideally, you need a risk reversal offer and a rock solid guarantee. Okay. You need a risk RR risk reversal offer and a rock solid guarantee. Now, this is at this point is when, you know, the money really starts to um, be involved. So when you're when you're in the talking and communication phase, these two are really what you need to have that is communicated to the marketplace, right? Uh, you need to have a, 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 a clear understanding and a clear communication of the serious problem or the serious hunger and desire that your ideal client has. You need to have a unique selling offer proposition or a unique mechanism of delivery because they're going to look at you and say, well, why should I do business with you? What, what is it about you? What is it about your company that makes you any different from the 11 others that offer what you offer? So you need a unique delivery methodology. And ideally, when it comes time in the exchange of your value for money, you need something that reverses the risk right? Where you put the risk on yourself as the business owner and you guarantee some kind of result. We do that at Bestseller Publishing. When we do a Wall Street Journal launch, which is a serious launch and requires a significant financial investment from a client to us, we take the risk away and we say, you will become a Wall Street Journal bestseller. It is guaranteed or we're going to give you your money back. Either you're going to be a, a Wall Street Journal bestseller or you get your money back. We will reverse the risk so you know what you're getting into. Same with Amazon. When we do a full Amazon launch with paid ads and social media and press releases and all that, we say you're going to become a number one Amazon bestseller for the entire week in multiple countries, in multiple categories, or it's free. So we reverse the risk with a tremendous guarantee. You should have that as well. You should have something that you do, something that you deliver, ideally, that really makes you stand out from the marketplace where somebody could say, you know what, this is, I want to do this. I have this serious desire or I have this serious problem. They have a unique way of delivering it and they're guaranteeing the offer. How do I say no? They don't if they have the money for it. Okay. So we haven't talked about your book yet because your book is not a part of this. Let me explain something really clearly to you. Your book does not solve your offer problem. Okay, let me say that again. Your book does not solve your offer problem. I've spoken to many clients in the past. We've launched over 1,200 books. I've spoken to a few even recently that have given me a list of things asking me if they should do it. Should they do a challenge? Should they do a workshop? Should they do, should they sell courses? Should they do an automated webinar, a VSL? And the real question they should be asking is, is my offer any good to the marketplace? Because if your offer is good, any of those things will work. If your offer is no good, then none of those things will work. Your book does not solve a bad offer. You need a great offer right? A serious problem that you solve or a serious desire that you satisfy of your ideal client, you need a unique way to either solve that or a mechanism to give them what they want desire-wise and ideally a way to reverse the risk so they feel comfortable in taking action. Your book does not solve any of those problems. 
if you don't have a business that's viable, an offer that's viable, your book is not going to solve that. As you know, I say over and over and over and over again, it is not royalties that makes any of this work. Royalties are great. There's nothing wrong with royalties. I like when they hit my bank account. Maybe I'll go out to a nice dinner that month maybe two or three. But the reality is I can't support a family and neither can you on royalties. What you do is you write a book because it is a supercharger. It is an enhancer. It is, it is an accelerator to your offer, not vice versa. Okay. Your offer is not an accelerator to your book. It's the other way around. So if you don't have these things in place, then you have to start really looking at what is it that I do what problems do I really solve? What desires can I really solve in my marketplace? What unique way do I have to solve that? And by the way, you can create your own unique way to solve that. It doesn't really have to be like you are reinventing the wheel. You don't have to do that, right? There are dozens of different tire companies. There are dozens of different rim companies, company that make, makes rims. They did not reinvent the shape of the wheel. What they did is they invented their own methodology to create the tire, the traction, the tread, et cetera. You can do the exact same thing. You can trademark it. You can name it. You can copyright it. That's what we do right? Enhanced ghostwriting is trademarked. It's trademarked as our unique mechanism for bestseller publishing. You can do the exact same thing. So there are some tricks, right, along the way, but those tricks do not fix the big problem if you don't have the offer in place. Now, there's some other things here, and I'm not going to call them four or five or six, but some other things that you should consider, and that is A, uh, you know, having some type of social proof, testimonials are very important when it comes to your offer, right? You want to have that. B, ideally, if you have some type of scarcity uh, or urgency when it comes to your offer, that will help people to take advantage. And ideally, you want to have a value that's about 10x, whatever it is that you're charging. You want to be able to confidently do something for someone that's worth if they do it the way you teach them to do it or they take advantage of the way you're teaching them to take advantage of it then it's going to be worth 10 times what you're charging for look the stuff that i'm doing right now for you for free that is an add-on to you just being a great client of bsp um i mean this is like, this is the stuff that matters. This is the stuff that if you put this in place in your business, it can 2x, 3x, 5x your business. It can be significant. So this is part of our value proposition, if you will, at Best Seller Publishing. These are the big three, right? These are the big three. And you want to find the sweet spot between where the the serious problem or desire lies, your own unique mechanism or unique selling proposition, and a risk reversal guarantee. If you have all of that, then you have a killer offer, right? And now your book can be used to do some amazing, amazing things, all right? So let's dive in. I want to show you some examples of what this looks like in real life, and I am absolutely happy to answer any questions that you have along the way. So let me show you some examples of uh, great marketers and how they're using their book, because I have not talked about how you can use your book yet. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but let me show you some examples. So just this past week, Joel Irway and I came up with an offer. We called it the Authority and Media Machine Program. And what, what, if you know anything about uh, Joel Irway and who he is, he's a buddy of mine. I've known him since the early days of Russell Brunson's Inner Circle. Joel has become well-known as a guy that helps people put together webinars, mini webinars, full webinars to sell their products and courses. And he's created nine figures in value for his clients. We started doing this thing called Infocast, which is basically a scripted podcast where he interviews somebody. And on that interview, he's asking questions in such a way to bring out their excellence, magnificence, how they help clients. It makes the individual sound like a rock star. And he's always been intrigued with my, in, in particular, Wall Street Journal 
offer and, and our anthology, Wall Street Journal. Uh, the the uh, anthology meaning that there are multiple authors in one book, and because there are multiple authors, we can spread out the cost of marketing this to Wall Street Journal bestseller status. But he was always intrigued by the amount of authority that people gained by that. So we said, maybe we could put something together. So we put this offer together, and we made it an absolute no-brainer, where there's a podcast interview, which Joel has by itself sold for $20,000. Then that podcast interview, it, it, it's not just a podcast interview, it's a scripted interview so that you or whoever joins looks like a rock star. Then uh, Joel gives a testimonial so that can then be used to get on other podcasts. It's turned into an evergreen asset uh, like, a, like a funnel, but a funnel that you can uh, send people through for indoctrination. That's maybe sounding like a bad word, but where, that's where they get to know who you are. They see that it, it frames people correctly for when you're going to have a conversation because they see that you are the man, you are the woman that knows how to solve their problem, right? So all that's turned into a funnel. Uh, and then there, you know, Joel and I said, let's just blast it out to our full audience, which I've never done before. And then we're going to take parts of the transcript. We're going to ghostwrite it, edit it, proofread it. We're going to launch it. Uh, we're going to get, you know, as many sales as it takes to hit Wall Street Journal. Plus, Joel and I are going to do some joint trainings. This offer is so good that we said, you know what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, we didn't, we don't lose anything, but it's so good. Let, let's make a brain dead simple offer for the right person. And we're not even going to have a salesperson. It's the first time I've ever done this where there's a button to click to give us $10,000. That's it. I thought this offer is such a no brainer. All they need to do is click the button and give us 10,000, or they can do six payments of 2,000. Well, we just closed the, the offer down yesterday. We have one or two more that may come in, but six people bought. So just now, I mean, could we have done better with a, maybe a sales crew and, and, you know, getting on the telephone and answering calls and all that? Yeah, but we wanted to make a brain dead, simple offer, one that was so good that people had to take advantage of it or not. And that was okay. So when you have a great offer, sometimes you don't need to have all of the, you know, necessary ingredients in place, like a sales team and setters and closers and all those other things. Sometimes you can just say, here's a button, click it and give me $10,000 and people will do it. In fact, six people did it uh, as of uh, yesterday. Um, this is an offer. I've talked about this a little bit, but I think it's, it's going so amazing. And, and again, it's not because anything great is in place. It's because this offer has these ingredients. This offer uh, deals with a serious desire slash problem. It is actually a unique selling proposition, and it has a complete guarantee. And so it, it matches all of those. And this is the uh, partnership that I created with Amy, Amy Dix. And this is the Authority Speakers Agency. And this is guaranteed speaking engagements, right? So here's the simple offer. Uh, what if I offer to book you on three actual speaking engagements guaranteed? Conferences, associations, summits, boot camps, even TV. So guaranteed speaking. Nobody else is doing anything like this. You, won't, you will not see another ad on Facebook. I have never seen another ad on Facebook like this. So what, what happens when you go ahead and put this out into the world. And so it's just a simple ad that like, that's the, the entirety of the ad that there's nothing cute or fancy about it. A couple of images of Amy, a couple of just text images. It goes to this simple short video of Amy and this application. It's like a six page application and that's it. Well, here's what is happening. Like every day, dozens of people are filling out the application <laughs> and wanting to get more information and, and join. And you might say, well, you know, that's great, but look, here's what we're spending. Let me give you an idea. Um, um, I'm showing you kind of the internal workings of stuff. So right now, to get an application, there are two ads here. These are the speaker ads. To get an application filled out, this is to get it completed, $7.46. 
to get an application completed, $10.16. Now, some of you have no idea how good that is. So let me show you. I'm going to show you something I've never showed anybody. So this is my YouTube uh, results. We track them every single day. This is what, see this image right here? Cost per book call. This is what it costs bestseller publishing to, to book, get someone to book a call. $333. That was the first week of May. $521. That was the second week of May. I'm spending tens of thousands of dollars on YouTube every month. And it cost me three to $500 to get somebody on the phone. Now, why am I doing that? Because we have a great offer and we uh, have a unique mechanism and we sell something very high ticket, right? 10,000 up to $100,000. So I can spend more to acquire a client. But look at this. We're getting people on the phone for 10 bucks. 10 bucks. This is like one tenth to one fiftieth what bestseller publishing pays. Now, why is that? Well, remember, it's the same people behind it. I, I'm doing both. Okay. Why is that? Well, it's really simple because with the, the offer of the speaker, guaranteed speaking, we've hit something that is a serious desire and we have a unique selling proposition. Nobody else is guaranteeing risk reversal. No one else is guaranteeing this. Now, the, the, the book stuff, that's more of a red ocean. There's more people that are involved in that, right? That's a, a, it's harder to explain to people that you have a unique mechanism than if you have a unique selling proposition, right? You need at least one of those. So understand, um, if you have a great offer and you have these pieces in place, holy cow, amazing, amazing things happen. Now, let's talk about your book for a minute. And the, the, one of the best um, groups that I see doing this is Learn. Learn is Anak Singhal. And they spend, his numbers are, he said they spend about a million dollars a month on marketing and advertising. So that's someone you want to probably pay attention to. So what is all of his marketing? Well, all of his marketing, uh, at least on Facebook here, because we can see that, all of his Facebook marketing is basically driving people to webinars, right? These are on-demand webinars. In essence, they're like video sales letters. How does he do that? He does that by making a killer offer and giving away a free book. So here are four examples of him doing that. What's the offer? Discover how to build an e-com empire using nothing but $5 products that people can't resist. And what do you get? Well, you register for your free seat. And then if you stay until the end, you get a free book, the little black book of e-com secrets, right? This is somebody spending a million dollars a month on advertising, and this is how he's doing it. And then, of course, he's got a great page that shows all of the reasons and all of the success stories. Remember I told you there were some other elements, right? Social proof, testimonials, scarcity, urgency, right? 10x value, all of that is, uh, is integrated into this. Uh, this is another one of their ads. Finally, make your first thousand dollars online. This is obviously targeted towards newbies, people that maybe don't even have a business using skills you learned in elementary school, right? In this workshop and free book, the free book, the breakaway business plan, right? You go, you go to this conference, you go to this online on-demand thing. If you stay to the end, same kind of thing, you get a free copy of the book. These are all the same group doing this. Here's number three with Learn. Uh, how I made $116,845 in a month with free traffic from Google and no products. Would you believe you can make five figures a month, right? That's, there's desire there for people to do that. And guess what? You go, workshop attendees get a free copy of the book, Spare Time Profits at the end, right? This, these are all biz op opportunities, meaning they're business opportunities. But the bottom line is they're using the book as this accelerant, right? This, this enhancement. It gives credibility, it gives authority, and it gets people to take action. But it doesn't work without a great offer. They work with Robert Kiyosaki. Finally, the starting over business plan, five-step formula to building a passive cash flow business from scratch. And guess what you also get? 
you get the book, How to Build Passive Cash Flow with a Classic Asset. And the forward is by Robert Kiyosaki. He didn't write the whole book. He just wrote the forward. Same exact model we have here. Workshop and free book. What's the point? The point is when you have an offer that has these elements in it, right? When you can solve somebody's serious problem and communicate that, or when you can solve someone's serious desire and communicate that, when and, and that has to be specific, right? Not a, a serious desire, a serious problem is specific. It's not when you go to the doctor, you go in there and say, I hurt all over, unless you hurt all over. You, you tell the doctor, you say, doc, I hurt right here, or I hurt right here, or right. I mean, you have a specific issue and problem that you're dealing with. You need to be able to communicate that. You need a unique mechanism or a unique selling proposition. Better to have a USP, but don't worry about it if you don't. And you need risk reversal slash guarantee. These other things are important as well, but they are enhancers. The biggest enhancer that you have, your best-selling book, right? Your book can be part of the offer. Your book can get people off the fence and say, you know what? This person is legit. This person is serious, but they're not going to say that if you don't have something enticing to them, right? You have to show them that you can solve their problem. You can fix whatever it is that is broken. Then the book becomes meaningful to them. Then they want to take the next step. But if you don't have that piece in place, please get that piece in place. And you know what? You're going to procrastinate it, perhaps, if you don't have it. Uh, you're going to be a perfectionist, uh, maybe, if you don't have it. Don't do that. Like, make the best choice you can, and then start testing it. And the market will tell you, just like the market told us and is telling us, hey, this is such a hot offer. The market loves it so much that this, is, this thing is exploding, right? Uh, guaranteed speaking engagements. If the market says eh, it's not so hot, then don't worry about it. It's okay. Test, you know, uh, another part of the problem that you can solve, but be specific and test. Be specific and make your offer. Okay, there's bunches and bunches of comments. I want to be able to help you guys answer questions that you have. This is obviously a really, really important part. Uh, Sylvie says in the movie industry, the producers ask the writers to give me the same thing, only different. Yeah, right. I mean, look at movie posters, look at movie titles. It's the same thing over and over and over. It's just a little different. That's okay. There is a methodology to this. So love that, Sylvia. Uh, Syl uh, Sylvie says, not unless you're Stephen King. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Suzanne, can you give me a few more examples of unique mechanisms for different coaching businesses. Well, uh, for a coaching business, you're part of the unique mechanism, but your story and how you came from wherever you are right now, um, going backwards, where you were in your difficulty, struggle, hero's journey to where you are right now, probably meant some kind of methodology that you created. So whatever that methodology is, and it could be very similar to someone else's methodology, but it's your own unique twist or spin on it, great. Then name that thing. Name it. Call it. Call it the, the Suzanne method. Call it, you know, trademark it perhaps, but, but spell it out. And that's really, your book should, right? The Publish, Promote, Profit is really nothing more than an explanation of our unique mechanism, right? Uh, it's a, it's an explanation of enhanced ghostwriting. It's an expo explanation of our bestseller launch program. So your book should be, if it's related to your business and your offer, then your book should explain your methodology and your unique mechanism. Hope that makes sense. James says, although you need a solid offer independent of your book, can't you talk about serious problem, unique mechanism, risk reversal in your book? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. hundred percent, James. Absolutely. Yes. You, and you should talk about all of that in your book. The point I guess that I wanted to make was that if you don't have that, then your book is not going to solve the problem. If you're talking about it in your book, then you obviously have that. And so yes, 100%, this should be the content in your book. Mike says, 
Russell Brunson coaches funnels, which aren't new, but he made it his own. That's right. Uh, Ryan Levesque created the ask method. Yes. And you think, I, I mean, I know Ryan well, obviously I know Russell really well. Uh, I mean, do you think nobody has ever asked somebody before, <laughs> right? Uh, survey funnels, uh, click funnels, right? I mean, Russell took the idea uh, that internet marketers had been doing for a long, long time and basically developed click funnels from it. Uh, it was his unique mechanism to deliver something amazing to the world, which now has, you know, geez, a billion dollar valuation, which can't beat that. And there he is right there. Uh, Sylvie says, started listening to this this morning. Finally. Awesome. Mike says, I saw that webinar bought here instead. Great. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, Sylvie says, I already do a podcast. How can this help me? Well, if you are, if you are the interviewer of your podcast, Sylvia, then I don't know that it can help you, but your podcast is certainly where you're speaking to your ideal audience and you're gaining authority, et cetera. So make sure in your podcast that you have a way to, for people to come back and connect with you, right? Uh, maybe uh, like what I do is I send them back to a, a, a special video that I've created that just speaks to my podcast listeners. So, so you could certainly do that, Sylvia, 100%. Uh, Mike says, so seven people bought because of that webinar. That's right. Uh, they bought simply because they watched a very clunky uh, and unscripted training, Mike. But the reason they bought is because it was a killer offer, right? The offer itself was great. And you know what? If no one would have bought, even though I thought it was a great offer, then it probably would have told us, well, I guess the offer wasn't so great after all, because the marketplace they're the ones that really decide, right? They're the ones that decide whether it's a great offer or not. I thought we would have had even more than, than what we've had. But, you know, it's hard for somebody without a telephone call to click a button and pay 10 grand. I get it, but we wanted to test that. Uh, let's see, Mark says, uh, or Scott says, uh, Rob, question. I think talking to Joel last week, you both said webinars are getting tough to make money. Uh, for an upcoming done for you BSP book client me um, book on the new B2B sales model. What types of offers nowadays are working from a best selling book um, are the best? So, so um, well, let me, let me, um, I, I don't know that Joel said they're not working. Um, I use pri our primary way, we have multiple funnels in, in, in multiple ways. My primary way of bringing people into my world is using my book in conjunction with like a very short form video sales letter. And that works great, but I have a whole methodology, you know, Scott, to, to make that work, right? I have, I have, you know, Joe who is, you know, does the initial call. And then I have my author development coaches that, that take the call and, and see who we can help and who we can't help. And we get hundreds of applications a month right? I'm spending hundreds of dollars to actually get somebody on the telephone. So, so obviously, yeah, I mean, uh, webinars are fine and they're working. I mean, look at what Onyx Singala is doing, spending a million bucks a month. They are working. However, you need all of the pieces in place for them to work. The cool thing about like that podcast interview idea was like, Here's what I thought. Here's why I thought it was a good idea for my clients when Joel and I were talking. I have so many clients that are like, I need a funnel, Rob, and, and I need help, and, and I want to do a webinar, and, and, and they don't know how to do any of that stuff. They don't know how to script a webinar. That, like, we're not a webinar scripting service. We help you get your book done. Uh, and, and so I try to teach on some of those things, but that's not my wheelhouse. And so I thought, well, this cool thing that is doing like is is just blowing up. Uh, Joel showed like a bunch of different examples of people that are doing great with the podcast. I thought here's a simple way where all someone has to do is show up and and help script the questions and then answer and bring out your personality and and enjoy yourself during the podcast. And now you have like a a scripted you know webinar. Uh, I thought that is what made it magic. So webinars are tough if you don't know what you're, what you're doing. Um, so I guess to answer your question, let me, let me, uh, let me read the second part offer to introduce a new B2B sales model that will grow your revenue in both new and retention businesses, saves thousand in turnover and sales and gets certified as 
uh, a no salespeople KIP Kips company. I don't, I don't exactly know what all of that is, but uh, here's what I would probably say. So a, a book funnel, um, if you know funnels and, and you know, um, well, it doesn't say, you know, that it says, you know, B2B sales model. So I'm assuming, like, I don't know what that means to you. B2B sales model to me generally means higher ticket. And it means that you're getting on the telephone with somebody because you're having to explain details about the offer, but you're getting on with somebody that is already pre-framed for the discussion. If, if that's what you mean, then my suggestion is you should be selling something expensive, high ticket, because you can really help somebody significantly. And then your book should be the accelerant to get people into that phone call with you or your team, uh, as well as maybe to get people to watch the webinar presentation that you do or whatever your video sales letter. You need something that is going to position them to have the conversation with you that says, okay, let me write you a big check. I want you to help my B2B company to grow. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. I mean, there, there are several obvious pieces to this puzzle, right? It, it starts with this idea right here. It starts with the offer. If you have your offer, you know, the, the serious desire that they have, doubling their, their B2B sales, great. Uh, what is your unique mechanism in doing that? What is your risk reversal? What is your guarantee? And then your book is the accelerant. Your book hopefully explains all of that in it. And then your book is also the accelerant to get them to trust you, like you, um, want to do business with you, want to watch your VSL, want to watch your webinar, et cetera. Uh, Angela says, could you talk a little more about risk reversal involving addressing objections, reasons not to buy? Okay, two different things. So a risk reversal does not necessarily overcome an objection. Um, typically what an objection is, is in a, in a real, and I taught my, um, my, uh, my C3 accelerator group this Monday. So yesterday, right? Yeah. Yesterday time flies when you're having fun. And so, so here's the deal. The, the, the reason people bring up objections is because if you've done a good job, there's tension in this conversation, right? There has to be tension in a, in a, a consultative sales conversation because you're showing them that they're here and that they want to be here. And you've shown them that this is a huge gap, right? How long have you been wanting to write a book? Oh, 10 years. Wow. Okay. Well, what's been the challenge? Well, this, this, this is great. And, and what do you think would have happened had you written your book? I mean, you think you'd gotten more clients and you know, this, 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 all that stuff, right? So all of that starts to create tension when you make an offer and you do a great job reversing the risk and you put guarantees, if they're not ready to pull the trigger and they want to release the tension, then they're going to say things like, um, I need to think about it, or I have to talk to my, uh, hold on a second, just, just leave it where it is. Totally cool. They're going to say things like, I need to talk to my partner. I need to talk to my spouse. Sorry, my, uh. My, my dogs are wanting to get involved in the uh, presentation. So there, and so you have to overcome and deal with those objections completely separately and distinct from the risk reversal guarantee. The risk reversal guarantee is not going to deal with an objection of, I need to talk to my partner, or I think, well, that, that's a little high, that's a little expensive. There are other ways to deal with those objections. The risk reversal is not going to, to deal with that. That's going to just incite more desire on their behalf to take advantage of it. Warren says, always so great. Thank you. You are super welcome. Hopefully that answered it, by the way, Angela. Lisa says, uh, they cost so much more now, webinars, funnels, et cetera. Well, you know, I mean, to do it right, Lisa, um, it's hard, right? I mean, to do it right, it's hard. And so, you know, my suggestion always is like, get into action. Like, if you're, if you, if you don't, we use click funnels, right? Cause I've been using click funnels since the very beginning, et cetera. You, you can use any funnel builder you want, but, but like get an action, get, get, you know, get a, a training on how to write and script your webinar, get a, a training on how to use a, and build out a funnel and, and just start testing it, right? Uh, throw some organic traffic at it. Let people know about it. Maybe spend 100, 200, 500 bucks on traffic. See what happens. So the only way 
you know, there, there's just two ways to do any of this, right? One is you have the pain of time because you have to try to figure this all out yourself. Uh, the other is the pain of money. And that is you write a big check to somebody else that's already figured it all out and you say, do it for me. And, and they do. So you got to choose one of those paths though. Joy says, uh, it's hard not to try to make it perfect if you're a perfectionist. That is true. Uh, I realize it can never be totally perfect. Thanks for pointing that out. Doesn't need to be. No, just take action. Just move it forward. Uh, thank you for an exceptionally informative BSPU. You are welcome. I hope this is helpful because like this is some of the most important stuff that I could teach you um, besides the stuff we're doing for you about your book. Like this is, this is where... It, it, it rises and falls, uh, you know, uh, as far as your business goes. Uh, Brenna says, thank you, Rob. I need to go host another meeting. Go get them, Brenna. Awesome. Eric says, action is the best solution. Love it. Great. Any other questions that I can answer for you? Remember, offer magic. It's these three things. It's communicating the serious problem or serious desire that someone has. It's having a unique selling proposition, which is very rare or at the least, at the very least, a unique mechanism that you deliver your offer on, and then having a great risk reversal and guarantee. The other things, social proof, testimonials, scarcity, urgency, value, all of those are important, but they are secondary compared to these big three, and your killer offer is right there in the middle of it. Suzanne says, this is super helpful. You are welcome. She says, thank you, Alicia. You and Bob are fabulous. Thank you, Alicia. Bob is right here. Uh, and Finley, not many people know Finley. I have another dog, Finley as well. So Lisa says, thank you. Have to get that book done. Get the book done. Let's get it done. And then it can be a great accelerant to everything else that you are doing. Uh, does, I don't see anything else. Jane says, thank you. You're welcome, Jane. Thank you for being my clients. Thank you for your trust in me and BSP. Go get them, build a great offer, uh, and sell that thing. Make some money. Use your book. Talk to you guys again soon.